Hello, hello, YouTube. It is I, Commando Dave, and I'm here to bring you what I am calling the Cursed Guns of After the Fall. A uh, short little video, as I have to rewrite my entire script for my review, since their newest update has been spectacular. I'm very happy with it. Uh, so I want to start off small, with just the little bits, just ease you into the, uh, the cursed shit. Some of you may not know firearms that well, or be that interested, or... As uh, picky as I am, what we have here is a M9 pistol. Pretty normal, 9mm, 15 rounds, close enough. Now, some of you might not know that this is a hammer-fired pistol, which means this little bit here on the back has to come back, let go, hit the firing pin, hit the round to fire. I'm going to slowly shoot this to show you. At no point does that hammer come down. And again, it just fires. If your hammer was to follow the uh, slide after you have fired it, that would be considered a dangerous fault, usually failing to fire. It would be something to do with the disconnector isn't working correctly and holding the hammer back down when it should. This would be a dangerous weapon in real life. This, this also goes to the, the Desert Eagle. It's also the same pro hammer problem. If you look very carefully... Nothing. Uh, also, this is on safe. That little bit there should be pushed down. There should be a red dot there to show that it's live and able to fire. It is currently on safe. Okay, so it's pretty normal, right? You know, thing looks the part. Uh, there's only a couple of small issues with it. That is not what the sighting training looks like. This would actually be its own rear leaf sight, and it would not be a Picatinny rail. That's what's being used. The other problem is this game seems to have a problem with safeties. In this position, the bolt cannot be pulled back on the real AK. Excuse my left controller being completely fucked. So, this is actually the safe position. This piece of metal pushes against the bolt. I mean, that cannot be pulled back and cocked. And also disconnects the trigger from the hammer. To actually, to select the fire, you actually have to push it down. The first push will be fully automatic. The second push will be semi-automatic. So, this gun... Would not fire in reality, but because it's a video game, someone has not modeled this correctly, it is in the safe position for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it's a little bit cursed. I present you the M4, which is also unsafe. Again, this game since from safeties, uh, so that is safe, fire uh, semi automatics on the top, and forward is on the back. This gun, I don't know what this game has against, you no. Know, actually working but it has a problem with safeties those of you who know the AR-15 platform know how it works for those of you who don't I'm gonna give you a crash course basically this entire tube here is called the buffer tube it is where your spring and buffer go into so when your bolt goes back it cycles backwards like so it pushes into this buffer tube that spring compresses once it reaches the max it pushes it forward because of the cycle method, you cannot shoot the gun without the stock. It must always be in there at all times, otherwise there's no spring to push it forward. Now, let me demonstrate, actually, firearm safety here. Gun's clear. That is not how a 55 5 oh, this is 7.62, but that is not how a rifle caliber AR-15 works. There are a couple pistol caliber ones that do that. They are, they don't do that through proper means. They have a completely different bolt and gas system also onto them. But yes, this can be fired without the buffer spring. Just not how it works. Ah, the humble ye haul revolver. A uh, uh, weapon as old as well. I think the Victorian era, but I digress. It's a classic weapon in literature, movies, games. Everyone knows the old Will Gat. You know? The old six shooter. There's a couple problems with this one. First of all, observe this little revolving chamber here. And resolve this hammer. There's a really cool detail that I love with this, and that is as you press. As you pull the trigger on your controller, the hammer comes back. 
because this is a double action revolver, which means as you pull the trigger, it performs two actions. It pulls the hammer back and releases the hammer so it can fire. A single action revolver, you pull the hammer back and then it fires. The trigger does one action. So a really, really cool touch. And I'll demonstrate it right here. See? Really awesome. And as you see, the chamber revolves. Hence, revolver. But I want you to focus right here. Holding the trigger down so the chamber hasn't moved at all since the firing. I'm going to slowly let go. And it goes back into place. Which means for every single shot, it is moving one bullet into the chamber, firing it, moving it back left, moving right back in the chamber, firing it, going back to the left. It is firing the same round six times. No, I, I know it's a cry with the little animations, but just give me it here, okay? Like, that isn't even the cursed part. That is just an animation that I noticed and kind of annoys me because I'm a gun nerd. Now, on a normal revolver, you'll notice that this entire bit here is enclosed. You know, it's a steel revolving chamber. Let me explain why. So, we have a shotgun shell here, right? Let's see why I'm stuck that on the little table here. You have your primer, your brass casing. Shotgun actually has a plastic casing, but you have your primer, your casing, and the bullets at the end of it. The reason the primer is so, when the hammer goes down, it hits the primer, primer ignites the gunpowder, the gunpowder puts the bullet all the way down range. The reason you have the chamber is to basically hold the brass in its shape, so it will focus all the gas down one direction, which is down the barrel. If you have the brass outside of the chamber, it will rupture, because as that gas goes off, the brass gets superheated and it will try to expand. And because there's no chamber there to hold it in shape and make sure it doesn't split, your brass will split in half and explode. If you put brass into a revolver like this, there is two results. The brass will immediately start going backwards as the pressure is applied, and then split, the gunpowder won't be burnt enough, and the round goes out at about a kilometer an hour. Or secondly, the brass manages to burn enough of, a, of the gunpowder to create an explosive charge and turn this into the world's worst frag grenade. Which is why our evolving chamber does not have exposed brass. This entire bullet is encased in steel. So that way it can most efficiently apply all of that gas and all of the pressure forward behind the bullet to get maximum velocity and not cause any dangerous issues such as explosions or what happened in the black powder days chain fire because the fire could leave that chamber and hit to the next chamber and ignite that as well. You start getting very dangerous when things are not isolated. Which makes this a cursed revolver. So not only would it not work, it is a potential frag grenade in your hand. I hope that was maybe educational for someone, or at least interesting, and the little bits of farms information you got there. It was very much improv with no actual script. Normally I try to write a script so it's nice and short as possible and conveys information as clearly as possible. Hopefully I get some stuff better stuff done in post but uh i hope you'll have a good one i hope to see you in the next video and i'm hoping the review will be done by next week it's all written i just need to do the shots and edit it so we'll see how that goes with how life goes some commando dave you have a good one